glad you could make it. Come on in, grab yourself a cup of coffee or whatever you like to drink, and sit down for a spell. Let me introduce myself. My friends call me Stony Creek. My wife and I live here on a small acreage here in uh, northwest Oklahoma that we like to call Stony Creek Heritage Farm. So during this video or subsequent videos, it might not be uncommon to hear roosters crow, turkeys gobble, peacocks holler, dogs bark, goats and sheep making whatever noises goats and sheep make. It's a farm, it's a homestead, so hopefully we can get through that. So what brings me to video? That's a great question. I've been asking myself that because I'm not very uh, video-ish. This, this will be my first one. But basically, I'm in a ton of different uh, homestead, homestead type groups on Facebook. And we get a lot of the same type of questions that gets answered. Of course, new members come in and it's almost an annual cycle. We start getting asked the same questions, so we're typing the same answers. And so I was talking to a couple of my friends and we thought that, well, maybe I should just do a video series so that I can just link a video. And I thought, well, that'll be a great idea. So here we are. Hopefully you enjoy. Oh, excuse me a minute. I better take this. Hello, the Stony. Oh, hi, Katie. So you got some eggs in the mail and you don't know what to do with them? New incubator, first time, huh? Yeah. Well, for the next step, stay tuned, and I'm gonna give you. Sh I'll show you how. Okay. Yep. Bye. So that was my friend Katie. She's not so uncommon from everyone else. Got on eBay, she's ordered some eggs, thought they were the best things ever, saw the latest meme on Facebook, had to have this particular chicken, so she ordered some eggs, got the eggs in the mail, and now she doesn't have a clue. So what I thought I'd do today is we're going to talk about how to uh, set up some eggs once you get them in the mail. You wouldn't think that that would be really a question to ask, because I can give you the, the quick answer right now. Pull them out of the inbox, inspect them for cracks, breaks, Put them in a uh, container, in a carton, pointy end down, let them set 18 to 24 hours, then throw them in your incubator. But let's find out a little bit more about that, what we're inspecting for, why we let them set for 18 to 24 hours, so that uh, you can have a successful hatch, and hopefully Katie can too. Now one of the good things, it just so happens that in the mail today, I received a box of eggs. Now I'm going to start out with this box because a lot of people, there's a lot of controversy. How do you ship a box? Do we mark these eggs? Do not x-ray? Do we not mark them fragile? Do we mark them fragile? Do we mark them live embryo? Like all these things are going to make a difference. Let me put some uh, common sense to that. You mark this, uh, this shipping box. Do not x-ray. Think of the world climate today. What's going on in the world? Do you think that if you wrote something down, do not x-ray, and the post office automatically goes, oh, these are eggs, we're not going to x-ray them. The bad guys in the world's probably going to think that same thing. No, that's not going to happen. You write do not x-ray on here, that's just going to make them x-ray. By the way, every box goes through x-ray. Sorry what you've, what you've heard, what your neighbors heard, it just happens, they're going to go through x-ray. So now, do we put eggs on here, do we put fragile? You know... That's the million dollar question. I've actually tried to ship eggs without putting fragile. I've shipped eggs with fragile. Results have been about the same, so it really depends upon what happens at the transfer station. For me, myself, I like to put a big orange fragile sticker on the eggs when they go through the box. I'm going to hope that people in the world still have a little bit of humanity and a little bit of compassion when they see that. They're not going to treat this like a football. I can tell you that our own personal post office staff, they're going to treat this thing fragile like it's their grandma's china. What happens once it gets on the truck, it goes to a transfer station, it gets distributed between different trucks, comes off the trucks, backs to your postal service, you know, it's hard telling. But I'm going to hope that they, uh, they treat this with care and fragile. Now one of the other things that we're going to have to hope is that whoever packed it knew how to pack it. And you know, that's, for, that's a whole different discussion, but we want to talk about what to do once you receive these eggs in the mail. So the first thing that we're going to do, we've got these eggs in the mail, 
we're going to set that aside because we start opening this up now we're not even ready for this thing so let's get out some of the stuff that we're going to need to unpack these eggs just happens I have this stuff here this would be a typical uh, egg crate load them in here goes right into the incubator if your incubator accept those, accepts these if not, you can use the uh, normal egg cartons. And these are going to be kind of a cool deal in themselves. I'm actually going to use these because I'm going to show you a, uh, a little secret or a little tip with this as we go along. One of the other things I like to use is a razor knife. I know, guys, I've got the big knives too, but we don't improve anything here. A little bitty razor knife, open it up just a little bit. You don't have to have that whole thing open. We're going to do this for two reasons. One, in case you slip, you're not going to cut yourself or at least as deep as you would with your great big old buck knife. The other thing is you don't want to damage the contents. You don't know how the person actually packed these things. If those eggs are up on top, you use your 7 inch buck knife to uh, bust through there. That's just going to be a bad day all over. So razor knife, a little bit of a tip. Let's cut this joker open. Before we do, we're going to inspect the box. Does it have any visible damage? Does it have any wet spots on it? Wet spots tells us that eggs are broke. Does it have any damage? Things like that. Those are things that you want to take photos of before you open this box up. So hopefully you can send that back to the seller and then he's he or she has done insurance on it. You can turn that in for insurance. We're going to talk about seller's responsibility, postal responsibility a little bit later. But those are going to be some of the first things. After that, we're going to open this joker up. Just a little sharp knife I didn't go through here. And you can see that uh, I've used foam, or my sender has uh, used foam shippers. There's also a myriad of different ways of shipping these things. I've seen them individ eggs individually wrapped, put in uh, shredded paper, and that's acceptable. I've seen them actually put in cartons individually wrapped a little bit of shredded paper taped in as long as they don't shake once you do that and then you put this in the box with shredded paper and then it doesn't shake you should be okay with it I like foam myself but you know what foam costs money so your the price of eggs will actually go up because you're going to pay for the cost of this foam too that's not going to come out of my pocket that's going to the buyer just like any type of re retailer does so once we've opened this up, what are we going to do when we look at these eggs? I'm going to set this at a little bit of an angle. We can see that we've got some, some eggs in here. So are we going to pull this out just like that? No, we're not. You know why? Because there's chances are, it, if it's a nice tight fit, you're going to break that thing coming out. You know what? Seller's not responsible for that. So what we're going to do is pull out the filler pieces first, put our hand underneath here, carefully lift this out, set it to the side, push up from the bottom and pull out our egg. We're going to look at each individual egg. When you're looking at these eggs, you're going to look for cracks. You're going to look for any damage. You're going to look for any excess fecal material. You don't want to have a nasty egg go into your incubator. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But you want to make sure that it's a nice solid egg. I should have brought a flashlight up here because that's a good way to uh, check for cracks. Is to actually candle them. But we're going to pull these out. And we're going to put them... This isn't a, a real good example because this is a Cornish egg, but we're going to put that uh, pointy end down. We're going to pull the next egg out. We're going to inspect it. We're going to place it pointy end down. We're going to do this uh, 12 more times. Pulled out a blue egg here. Here's, a good ex here's something I want to just bring up. Big misconception. Oh, well, blue eggs are more nutritious than brown eggs and brown eggs are more nutritious than white eggs you know when you break these open they're all the same on the inside egg color didn't have anything to do with it it's the hen's nutrition what was that hen fed before this egg was laid that's what's going to make all the difference in the world it's not the color of the shell that that's irrelevant it's what the hen has eaten herself so just thought I'd throw that out but it is pretty neat for uh, 
kids to see all the different uh, colors that can come out of these eggs. So we can see that our first six there's no, no issues with. We're just going to make those go away. Reach in here, we're going to do the same thing, put our hand underneath here, have your hand under all six eggs, pull them up, set them down, pull out the tops, and then we're going to inspect. Say we did pull one out and it had a little bit of a crack to it. It wasn't seeping, it's got a little bit of a crack. Is there a way to fix that? Absolutely there is. Take a candle, melt it, just let the wax drop right on that crack. That's a good way to seal it. Some people even put tape over it. I've not done that. I can't say that works or doesn't work. I have my own theories on that, but whom I haven't tried it, so I can't disbunk it. Maybe that'll be one of the things we do in another episode. But if it is a little crack, don't, don't completely throw it away. There are ways to uh, repair that, but let's hope that uh, they all come out nice. So you can see that we've ordered 12 eggs here. Now I did mention that we need to let these set for 18 to 24 hours after we put them in here. One of the questions I get asked was, Stoney, why do we have to do that? And you know, and that's a great question in itself. But I'm going to let the professor answer that because there's all sorts of neat stuff inside this egg and he's got the machinery to let you see on the inside of it. And we're going to go from there. Here you go, Professor.